person. The, uh, the governor uh, mentioned you in his speech, and I know there are actually... Nice to meet you in person. It is, it is nice to meet you as well. I also know that there are several other people running for Senate. It's a contested primary. We didn't choose a, a favorite. Rob happened to call me and was proactive like a candidate needs to be. I did reach out and, and both talk to and, and email uh, two other of your opponents, both of whom eventually said, well, they had too many kinds of schedules, conflicts in their schedule, and they never showed up. Either. Okay. The, uh, so, we're going to turn the program over to you for a few minutes. Um, the, uh, I had originally planned for about 10 to 15 minutes. The, uh, so we're a little behind schedule. But I also want to give a little bit of background. You have it in here. One thing I didn't realize, if you remember the CIA, the, uh, in addition to being a member of Congress and a professor at the uh, ultra conservative of Yale University. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> so I congratulate you for being here. And everybody for having me here today uh, and in particular I want to thank uh, Governor Kachuri and his lovely wife for their service to our party, their service to the state of Rhode Island. Uh, just a few years ago those of us in New England were challenged uh, with the closure of the submarine base in Groton, New London which threatened the, the whole center of excellence for subsurface warfare here in New England, Rhode Island as well as Connecticut. And he was a tremendous leader, uh, helped, uh, helped turn that uh, bad decision back, and, and he's a tremendous leader dealing with very tough issues uh, in the state of Rhode Island today. So thank you, Governor, for your service. <laughs> I also want to comment about uh, uh, Michael Steele uh, and Ken McKay. Uh, you know, these have been tough times for Republicans over the last few years. They are doing a fabulous job. They are speaking up for our values. They are working hard to make sure that we will do well. And oh yes, uh, uh, Michael Steele and Senator John Cornyn have declared to me that New England is on their target list to rebuild the Republican Party. And that's what we The last two years, the last few years have been challenging times for us as Republicans. In 2006, I, won, I lost my fourth race for Congress by just 83 votes. The same year, Nancy Johnson, the dean of the delegation in Connecticut, lost. We also lost uh, Jeff Bradley and Charlie Bass up in New Hampshire. And just last year, 2008, the last standing Republican member of Congress in New England, Chris Shays, lost in a very bitter race uh, in the 4th District of Connecticut. Now, it is the first time in 180 years that there are no Republican members of the House of Representatives from New England. That's something we have to change! <laughs> Earlier this year, Time Magazine, in the May edition, had a front page story with a big elephant and a title, Endangered Species. Are we in danger? Hell no, we're not in danger. Time Magazine, come to New Park. Come into this room. Look around. Look at the candidates. Look at the people. Look at the support. The American values, the Republican values, they're all coming back. And I say thank you, Nancy Pelosi. Thank you, Harry Reid. And thank you to President Obama for bringing the Republican Party back together. <laughs> My name is Rob Simmons, and I'm working hard to make sure that the next senator elected in the state of Connecticut will be a Republican. <laughs> and if Senator Dodd will retire to Iowa or Ireland or wherever the heck he lives, but he's got to go. I am proud to be a New England Republican. I am proud of our Republican values. Abraham Lincoln, the first Republican president of our party, stood up for liberty and personal responsibility. Teddy Roosevelt, who stood up for conservation of our natural resources and protection of our environment. Dwight Eisenhower, 
who defeated fascism in the largest war in the history of the world. Ronald Reagan, who stared down the evil empire and the Soviet Union and believed in peace through strength, not weakness and accommodation. We support free enterprise because it's brought more progress and quality of life to human beings than any other economic system there is. And we support education, because without an educated population, you cannot have personal responsibility, and you cannot have a democracy. So education is critically important to us. We're a big tent party that can tolerate different points of views, because with freedom comes diversity. With freedom comes diversity. And we believe that the role of government in our society, in a free society, is to do what individuals cannot do for themselves. And finally, I believe that we're a party that honors public service as a means of helping others, not helping ourselves. These are just a few of the values we share. These are the values that have made our nation great, and these are the values that we need to bring back to Washington, D.C. Many years ago, as a young Army officer, I raised my right hand, and I swore an oath to uphold this Constitution of the United States of America. And when I received my officer's guide, there was a code of government ethics. And as I read through it, it said, Public office is a public trust. Public office is a public trust. Are there any military personnel or veterans in the crowd here today? Please stand up. Please stand up. <laughs> you know as I know that it was not about you as an officer, a non-commissioned officer. It was not about your rank, it was not about your privileges, it was about the soldiers you served, served with and led, it was about your chain of command, and it was about your mission. And that's what public service is all about. And that's what I believe, and that's what we believe. And to me, the epitome, the epitome of a public servant is, yes, a military person, a firefighter, a police officer, an elected official, a governor, a member of Congress, a U.S. Senator. And we have to maintain these standards when it comes to our public officials. No more Charlie Rangel, no more Chris Dodd, no more nonsense of, of abusing your public office for personal, for personal interest, no more self-interest above the interest of the people you serve. It's time for them to go. and the President have put America on a crash course with economic reality. We see it in Washington, we see it in our states. Unprecedented and unsustainable spending that promised to bankrupt the country and saddle our children and grandchildren with unprecedented debt. Democrats love to remind us that they inherited a deficit, and that's true enough. But since the Democrats have gained full control of all the levers of power in the federal government over just the last eight months, the projected deficit has gone from $400 billion to $1.6 trillion, a 400% increase. And we should know, we should know that we're headed in the wrong direction when even the Chinese communists are complaining about our overspending. <laughs> debt is now projected to double by 2012 and triple by the end of the next decade, which means that America will accumulate more debt under President Obama than it has under every president from George Washington to George W. Bush combined. And a child today, born today, has a bill from the federal government of $40,000 before he or she has her first diaper change.